everyone, my name is Sergeant Daniel S. And today we are going to go through two things, actually, maybe even more. First is the purpose and how to establish a good marksmanship position. And second is how to be a good coach in marksmanship. Now let's get to it. I haven't had these for a long time. Now, the purpose of establishing a good marksmanship position is to preserve consistency and fluidity while you shoot. Now, how important is fluidity and consistency in marksmanship? Those are the two most important things. It's so important, in fact, that you have to be the most consistent ever in every single shot you take. I'm not talking centimeters here. I'm talking millimeters, down to the millimeter. It's so important. And that's what distinguishes a good marksman from a bad one. Now, let's start discussing about the good marksmanship position in prone position. Standing we could discuss later. So, first thing you need to do is just lay down, relax. Marksmanship is not a sport of tension or force, it's a sport of relaxing and meditation. So sit down, relax, lay down, and then start adjusting your legs. If you're right hand dominant, put your left leg parallel to your body, so it has to be straight. And then put your right leg to the side as right as possible, forming a 10 to 30 degree angle in your body when you're in prone, which creates a good stable position for shooting. Now let's talk about uh, introducing the rifle and uh, Sorry about that. And you're sling to the position. So the first thing you're gonna do if you're left, uh, I mean right arm dominant, reverse, everything is reverse for left, left arm. You put your left arm forward on the forestock, holding it, and your right arm uh, on the stock itself near the bullet, near the trigger, I mean. It's different for different people, but you just have to adjust what's comfortable and what you feel is the most stable for you and you are basically almost ready to shoot. And ladies and gentlemen, you've reached your desired position. Now, ladies and gentlemen, you're not ready to fire yet because you have to go through the process of shooting your bullet. It's not just like, eh, I'm so smart, I'm gonna fire this rifle and it's gonna land. <laughs> None of that. It's a whole process. But before we get started, let's talk about the safety and the, the importance of safety while using the rifle. You don't want to get injured by any bullet even if it's just a small 0.177 millimeter bullet. Now, the safety measures you have to go through is, of course, don't ever point the, the rifle, the muzzle, the 
barrel of the rifle towards anyone, even if it's unloaded, even if you know that it's completely like you're a thousand percent sure that it's unloaded. Better be safe than sorry. Maybe the boogeyman came at night and loaded the rifle. You never know. Jokes aside about the boogeyman, of course. There's also one more thing you should, two more things actually you should do. You should always wear PPW, personal protective wear, or PPE, personal protective equipment. Anyways, as well, you should also dry fire and pull the bolt back and open the pump when you're finished with your relay during shooting. To be a thousand, five thousand percent sure you won't injure anyone. So now that we talked about it, the safety of shooting a rifle and its importance, let's now talk about how to shoot a rifle. So there's this thing called the shooting cycle. So it's the cycle you always take to go through shooting. So in that cycle, there's three steps. There's the shot preparation, the shot execution, and the follow through. Three. Now let's start with the shot preparation. The shot preparation consists of pumping and loading the rifle. So pumping you, so the first thing you should do is pump. First of all, you pump the rifle for seven seconds. I prefer seven seconds. Some people say three, five, but seven seconds to fully load it with air as much as possible for consistency purposes. If you go above, it's all right. If you go below seven seconds, it might cause some inconsistencies, but that that's if you are but it's just some very, very minor inconsistencies that professional look for. So piece of advice for the future, if you become a pro star, 99,000 level, uh, blue, eye, blue eyes, drag, blue, eye, blue eyes, white dragon, marksmanship uh, person, just, so you, you know, pump, <laughs> pump the rifle. That's for seven seconds. Anyways, I, I too long. Now, and then you and then you do the loading process. So you push the bolt back, you place your lead pellet pointy part or flat part forward, and then you close it in and then you start aiming. And that's when the shot execution process begins to happen. So now that we talked about shot preparation, now we're gonna talk about the most important part of shooting the shot execution it consists of three parts breathing aiming and trigger control now let's start with the aiming aiming is one of the most important parts in marksmanship that is the biggest factor that defines a good marksman from a bad one a good one always aims at tens and gets tens and the bad ones always get something below anyways aiming consists of Aligning your rear sight and your front sight to the target straight and forward and parallel to the target so that you can shoot a 10 pointer. It all seems easy, right? No. Breathing and trigger control. Breathing controls a lot of things. If you could hold your breath for 65 minutes, that would be ideal during marksmanship, but you're only limited to about 10 seconds, which is plenty enough time to aim. Now, before you need to breathe to relax first, you need to take one breath, two breath, four breath, and then as many breaths as you need, then get relaxed and then you need to breathe out the breath you just took, hold it. Hold it in the position you are in. Stabilize. Focus and be consistent. Look down your target. Look down your aim. You will see your target. If it's in the middle in the front sight, and if your front sight is in the middle of your rear sight, if it's all aligning, start squeezing the trigger. The third part. Squeeze it, don't pull it and then jerk your whole rifle and ruin the whole thing, no. Squeeze it. Now, a very important part is to not anticipate any recoil from an air rifle, because there isn't any. You might flinch and you might flinch on your first shot, your second shot, but 
get used to not flinching at all because that could ruin your whole shot. And when you squeeze and when you finally pull that trigger and you are ready for the sound to come out, your bullet will come out of the muzzle and then go down the range and hit your target. If you did it very well, you will get good you will get a good aim if you didn't you need much more practice it doesn't marksmanship doesn't come on its own just like anything else in life food for thought now that we finished the first two steps of our cycle we have to go to our third and final step the follow-through stage the follow-through stage might seem insignificant at first, but it is also it is as important as the other two stages of this cycle. Now, it, now the follow-through stage is the simplest, and it consists of only you just standing there for a few seconds after you shot your shot, with your target being in the middle of your rear and front sight. Now, you might be saying to yourself. Oh, well, I shot the shot, the bullet already landed in the target, and I can go immediately after. No, you cannot go immediately after. Because there's a few things that could happen if you do go immediately after. First of all, your bullet might not have exited the, the barrel of the rifle, and when you go immediately after, and you start pumping the rifle again sure it won't create any danger you're not the freaking flash and go and then it goes shooting up right but it might go go and then just as it exits the barrel you flinch it forward it might go a little bit more up and you can miss your target your 10 pointer your beloved 10 pointer and so to not miss your beloved 10 pointer you should go through the follow-through stage and it and the follow-through stage also prepares you for the next cycle and relaxes you a little bit so i've shot this shot let's go forward and that is basically it for this cycle after this cycle you repeat it again and eventually first it could come very hard but eventually it when you become a better marksman in shooting, this will become second nature to you. Okay, so now I explained a little bit of the shooting cycle and the most important parts of marksmanship, safety, cycle, the steps of the cycle. Now let's go through the sling. After you've conquered all of these three steps, you might go and try your sling. Now the sling is used for to stabilize yourself as much as possible. But the thing is, the sling could, if you use it incorrectly, really ruin your shot. Like I said, marksmanship is about relaxing, not about tensing up and shaking like a maracas. So now, now let's go explaining how the sling works. I said how the sling works, but how you put it on. Okay, that thing aside, first thing you do is you put on your sling on your arm. So you have that loop where you put your arm. Not the big loop. That big loop is used to attach to the rifle, but the smaller loop, you put it through your arm in between your shoulder and bicep muscle. So around like over here for me. For you, it might be different. And then the next thing you do is you attach it on to the rifle. And that's it. That's the simplest form. That's oversimplifying it over here. But you have to also adjust it to you. You have to adjust it. You have to tighten it over here so it doesn't fall out. But not too tight because it could create tension. It could create a shaking effect while you use the rifle. Another thing is you have to adjust it and tighten it up on your... your the, the long part where you attached it onto the rifle as well 
to stabilize it because if you don't stabilize it, then it doesn't have any effect and it's useless. And then one last thing is adjusting its height on the forestock. So you have to go through, it might take a few minutes, but when you're shooting, when you're using your sling, you might have to go through and unscrew that sling attacher thingy on your rifle and place it back and forth until you find your ideal sling position. And other than that, that's it. That's the one-on-one -on -one guide to how using, how to use a sling. Now that we've gone through the how to shoot a rifle, now we're gonna go through coaching to shoot a rifle. Now, marksmanship is a thing where coaching can be very, very, very helpful for this because it's a sport of subtlety. And every single, every single subtle thing can have a big effect on your outcome. As a coach, it is your requirement, it is your necessity to improve your athlete's performance and their techniques and strategies, especially, especially in marksmanship. Now, like I said, there's very subtle things, but what should you exactly be looking for? What are those really subtle things? Now, those really subtle things lie in the three stages, three cycles of shooting. Every single subtle thing in the steps, in the stages, could have an impact on that. So keep that all in mind. So the breathing. Is he breathing right? Is he... Is he... Is he doing it right? Is he holding his breath and... Is he... Following through after that? Is he aiming correctly? Is he putting the target in the center of his front and rear sight? Is his position right? Are his legs in the right spots? Is he loading the rifle right? Is he pumping it right? So that it's always, the air is always in a consistent manner pumped into the rifle. All of these things coaches should look after because sh shooting a good shot is like it's like building a puzzle out of techniques and subtlety and subtle things. And every single piece of subtle techniques you add to that puzzle piece, the closer you're getting to completing the puzzle to create a, the best shot you can. The, the beloved 10-pointer you're searching for. And that's what a coach should look after. One thing is to look after those subtleties and, and be like, Oh, I see that little thing you did wrong. Another thing is to provide the right feedback. And giving that information in the correct way. You're not going to write a 500 word essay on how uh, a cadet should change his position, change his feet a little bit to the right, you know. Make it simple. Don't make it something complicated because it will only ruin the, the, the cadet's position and second make it positive don't make it like you're 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 bad you're 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 you're, you're a big old piece of cheese you, you don't know what you're doing you're bad you have to put your foot over there none of that keep it positive because you want to first of all you don't want to ruin you you want to portray yourself as something positive something helpful as a coach because the coach is in fact, something that helps the athlete and leads them to victory. And if you're portraying and if you're portraying and calling them big old pieces of cheese, you're not really doing that very well. That aside, another thing that feedback you have you have to provide it either after practice or during it. When the cadet did it, when the athlete did that thing just now. As, as soon as possible, you, you, you provide that feedback so that he realizes, oh, I did this and then I can improve it. Another thing is, is that it's really important to provide feedback in marksmanship because the cadet might not actually realize what he did wrong over there. Because these things, like I said, are very, very subtle. 
and from your position it's easier to see them than the cadet and so be a good coach hey, I've got now that you've got all that settled down marksmanship is a sport of subtlety and consistency what differentiate a good marksman and a bad marksman is the subtleties they follow and it's the subtle techniques they use to improve their shooting like i said in the beginning it's not about centimeters in marksmanship it's about it's down to the millimeter you are shooting because the the best mark, marksman is the most precise one this was sergeant daniel s this was sergeant daniel s what we've just discussed is how to be a good marksman and how to be a good coach salute Hold on, that's high in Romanian. <clears throat> Salut, adieu, mes amigos. Anyways, just bye.